Food and Beverage Magazine Live, bringing food and beverage to life with your hosts, James Beard Award winner Jennifer English and Food and Beverage Magazine publisher Michael Politz. Featuring leaders in the hospitality, branded food and beverage, and CPG industries, many of whom are Jennifer and Michael's friends in the business. For an informal and informative conversation where friends in the business share the latest intel, ideas, and best practices. Live, juicy inside scoop from the tastemakers, newsmakers, bread bakers, drink shakers, spoon lickers, clam diggers, farms, foodies, and friends of the food and beverage magazine world. Here are your hosts, Jennifer English and Michael Politz. Beautiful pasta, beautiful cheese, beautiful day. Friends, welcome. Or should I say, buongiorno, bienvenuti, amici. It's so good to have you here. I love Italian food. I love Italian food, and I think if I knew more about how to make it, I would love it even more, which is why I love Italian cooking, and Chef Atti, who's joining us, to, oh, look at that, come on, show me that again, Jonathan, put those back up, let's just look through these beautiful images from iloveitaliancooking.com, it's, oh, oh my goodness, that looks so good, so risotto. Oh, and the truffles. I'm telling you. I'm swooning already, and I don't know how to say swoon in Italian, so I'm just going to demonstrate it by introducing our guest today. It's a beautiful day here at Food and Beverage Magazine Live. I'm Jennifer English. I'm your editor at large, and our guest today is none other than the one and only Chef Atti. I love a cook, italiancooking.com comes to you live and in a very, really delicious way, teaches us all how to get from this to the pasta we just showed you in those images. Chef Ati, bienvenuti. Thank you. Good morning. How are you? It is morning where you are. Now, we're, let's tell everybody and make them jealous. Where are you? I'm in uh, Milan right now, and it's uh, 1 15 a.m. actually. Wow. Thank you for staying up so late to be oh, with no us. Problem. No problem. You know, it's when we talk about a, Italian food, uh, we are talking, of course, in the most broad and almost monolithic terms. And quite literally, Italy is one of those countries where literally from city to city, the, the food, the, the culture of the food, the tradition of the food can change literally from a block, a mile, a meter. Uh, will you tell us what we know about Italian food and what we don't know? What should we know about Italian food? What is Italian food? Italian food, it's history. Italian food is me when I was a little kid behind my grandmother's uh, just, you know, trying to see what she was doing when she was making the dough. Italian food is uh, get all the family together in the springtime to make the tomato sauce at home. So uh, Italian food is actually something that we have in our DNA and it's something that we are really born because to us food, it's culture, it's everything. For an Italian person, food brings the family together, it's conviviality. So uh, when we talk about food, actually, we talk about something very important to us that has a very profound uh, meaning. And that's why to us it's very important to educate uh, whatever client comes uh, to a restaurant or even in a foreign country, not only in Italy, uh, what kind of tradition the particular dish has and uh, its origins. One of the most exciting things about iloveitaliancooking.com is that you will actually teach us. Yes. And what you teach us is really, I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Can you come back and as we're talking about what is Italian food, do we know what Italian food is in America? What is this thing we think we're in love with? Well, uh, America, it's used to know Italy by its flag. So there are a lot of products, uh, 
food products in the United States that have the uh, a symbol like the Colosseum or the Pisa Tower and the Italian flag. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that that's an original product. Now, uh, this kind of distortion of the culture, uh, it's making uh, people understanding of the Italian food a little bit more different than what actually really is. In fact, all the tourists, American tourists that come to, uh, to Italy, when they come to any restaurant, they really are surprised and, uh, uh, and they have their palate tasting a whole different kind of flavors and right. uh, really don't expect that. So unless you go to cities like Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Miami, DC, where there is actually a, a big, big, big Italian community with a lot of Italian chefs there, then you can really taste uh, the, what the real food is. But food in Italy is little towns. Food in Italy, it's like going outside the town to, to find that particular restaurant where you have the old grandma making the, the, the uh, handmade pasta in the morning and dries out during the hours of the morning and she serves it fresh with, the, uh, with some sauce for noon, just like the dish that you showed before. So that particular flavor is just education and history that I want to translate to the American people uh, or, or any client that connects to my website every time they want to feel this kind of experience. I want to talk about something, and I didn't want to use provocative headlines to do it, and there's your website. We're going to show this while we're talking. Thank you. What's provocative is the piracy in the food world where people who are not making authentic Italian products yep. are using images and Italian sounding names, maybe even Italian words to suggest something that's not true. And that's the Italianness that you speak of that can have a very misleading effect on consumers, especially here in the United States. Would you talk a little bit about this very provocative idea? Because as we go through, um, and I don't want to pick on any brands in particular, but you know, when, when there are sauces and products that say things like Prego, is that saying so innocent and yet it's a much bigger problem than we realize because of the massive cultural impact it's having on us. Would, would you talk about that for us? Well, um, each area that produces a particular kind of food, let's talk about the balsamic vinegar, for example, or the Parmesan cheese, which is one of the most common products sold in any United States uh, common supermarket. They have to have it as a symbol, uh, which is IGP, which is, uh, yes, but you should know that whatever you see in the crust can actually be easily copied. What we don't oh, know, no. the shape of the cheese, each little uh, sign or each little mark has a particular meaning that certifies the true original uh, um, uh, production uh, of, of an Italian okay, product. Yeah, we exactly so we have IGP, which is an Institute of Geographic Production that certifies that the particular product comes from that region. So what I or DOP um, like um, or DOC, uh, these are all uh, initials that certifies that that product is made in Italy and it's been certified by the Made in Italy Commission, Food and Drug Administration here in Italy, that certifies that they're a true Italian product ready to be uh, consumed. So look always for these initials, IGP, DOP, or DOC for the wine. Those are 100% uh, signs that that's a true Italian product, no matter what the name is. Right. How widespread is this? I know that there were uh, lawsuits and federal um, treaties that now protect, and, and of course, Parmesan cheese is one of those very famous examples. In the Absolutely. United States, it's very easy to, to find a cheese that's spelled P-A-R-M-A-S-E-A-N, Parmesan, but that's not the same thing as the authentic Reggiano Parmigiano. Mm -hmm. How many kinds of products are in the American grocery stores that have absolutely no bearing or resemblance to anything authentically Italian? Is it just even possible to calculate? Thousands, yeah. thousands. Uh, I do not want to make any names, of course, but there are some, my last experience was in Miami 
And uh, I used to go through some uh, supermarket there and I can promise you that in that supermarket, everything from ham to prosciutto to uh, any kind of cheese, no matter if it was pecorino, no matter if it was parmigiano, they were all, all not made in Italy, made in other countries like Canada or Mexico, or some are Asian, even with the tomato sauce. Um, you must go to specific boutique, let's call it that way, just so that you can be sure that that's a particular product. Of course, there's also a huge price difference. And I know that sometimes to buy an original product in the United States may be a little bit more expensive, but I guarantee that the quality of the food that you put in your mouth, it's outstanding and it goes beyond. It's just like what, what, what a regular dish of pasta is. And I got to tell you, Reggiano Parmigiano does not come in a tiny pre-graded packet. No, there is no Italian that would ever buy uh, Parmesan cheese already grated. Yeah. No way. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to be really positive today and I don't want to be negative. I want to focus on the fact that what we love and think of as Italian food that has already gotten us into an awareness of Italian culinary tradition opens us up even more. If we like the bad stuff, frankly, we're going to love the good stuff. Of course. Uh, you're going to fall in love with the good stuff. I can. Uh, I, I, I have a, a client of mine that uh, I did a personal uh, uh, catering over his house. He lives in uh, Potomac. And uh, one of the best compliments I received was that I have ruined restaurant lasagna for him because uh, he just uh, was amazed from uh, the way I made it. And made he never saw the bechamel sauce made from scratch, for example, or even a tomato sauce that cooked for five hours uh, before we actually uh, put it on the lasagna. So he, for him, it was like a, a whole new world. We are right to fall in love with spaghetti and meatballs. We are right to fall in love with lasagna. We are right to fall in love with the risotto with truffles shaved on the top. We are right to fall in love with Reggiano Parmigiano and prosciutto di Parma. Reggiano Parmigiano is known as the king of all cheeses, rightly so. What you've done in iloveitaliancooking.com is give us a way where we can just press pause and start over in a sense, learning about the best of the best from someone who is a master in the topic. That's why you're here with us today. Would you talk you. a little bit about the ways that you teach and the ways that you offer classes to clients in the Zoom era? Well, um, one of the, the, the hardest thing that I actually had to work on was the fact that without my presence, uh, it was impossible to actually correct uh, physically the, um, the, the the student uh, or uh, even to show uh, if I was doing a personal chef uh, catering uh, how something was going to be made. So what I did is um, I did a few topics that are very basic and very simple just so that you as a student can actually learn what is your favorite food. And based on that- so I wanna just point out, I don't know if you can see on your screen, but we've got yeah. your website up there and there are six categories, basic right. cooking, kneading, making a risotto, cooking fish, uh, cooking meats. Which one would you like to click on to use as a demonstration about what you're talking about? Uh, actually, um, well, all of them, to be honest with you. Uh, know, it's hard. The, shortest, the shortest one would be uh, probably the risotto because in about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, you can do that. But on the website, uh, since those are topics and- uh, um, Well, we're gonna click on one and have it playing while we're talking. So people it, can it will appear, it will link to an email. It will not appear to my demonstration because oh. uh, see by Zoom, I don't know what kind of risotto you like. So we have to actually get in touch before and understand what kind of ingredients you have to buy just so that I can guide you and uh, we can uh, have the, the learning process. Unfortunately, these are all steps that you have to adapt when you have a, a Zoom conversation rather than be live, you know? I love this. And the same thing, but the most interesting thing is with the team building. 
because yeah. that's the other thing that it's more fun because actually it's the same process as the cooking lessons but you're actually doing it with other people connected in zoom also but each one of them is cooking one particular dish out of some ingredients that I tell them to buy. So the whole team actually has the same ingredients and they all have to develop their creativity to come up with a dish. And uh, that's something that, you know, uh, to me it's unique and it's like the new generation of uh, what even an online connection can bring people together because this is the power of food. To me, this is the power of the food. I love this. One of the things I wanted to give you a chance to do is to tell people how satisfying it is. You're in Italy teaching us Italian cooking. Yeah. People might not realize how important it is to get that authentic, but your classes are enormously successful. I'd like to invite you back to actually do a small demonstration with us another time. Sure. I'll go in the kitchen, we'll do it together. But sure. um, talk a little bit about how actually easy and successful these distance cooking classes actually are they're very easy because it's like you and i right now i mean i'm here i'm looking at you and uh you have your spaghetti there you have some sauce and some parmesan there so what i'm going to be teaching you is actually a technique that maybe you didn't know uh, the right amount of time to cook the pasta or how even to uh, uh, make a, a fresh tomato sauce out of a, a, a real tomatoes rather than out of the, the can of the bottle. So um, when to put the salt and uh, uh, what kind of pot to use because each pot yeah. has its own different kind of uh, heat distribution. So, uh, you know, all these kind of details really improve the knowledge and make you understand where to go and what to do. Um, to give you an example, I use the cast iron pots with the, uh, the glass uh, uh, lamination inside to make my risotto. Like porcelain, like uh, a Le Creuset or something like a Le Creuset. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yes, that's, exactly. a, that's what I would know here, but there's a better kind that you know from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is exactly that kind of uh, 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 material. But that's because the cast iron, it uh, spreads the heat all around and, spread, and, and, and holds it. So whenever you have to toast the rice, whenever you have to uh, add the, the little wine and, the, and all the smells and all the perfumes, stay inside. They don't go away and they're captured by the, the food that you cook in. And this is something very important because once you're going to eat it, you're going to say, oh, my good Lord, this is like a major difference because I didn't know how to do this. And I'm never going back. Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Chef uh, Hoppy, thank yeah. you so much for making time to be with us. Thank what you. would be the first class you would encourage everybody to sign up for and take with you? To be honest with you, um, risotto or pasta, because I will say that for American people, those are like more of the Italian kind of a, a, a more custom and more common dishes. So to teach how to really make a dish of pasta, not to overcook it, to make a good al dente pasta and uh, to make a, a good ragu uh, with the right meats and the right amount of tomato and uh, uh, you know the right ingredients, which not always uh, uh, you have to put garlic, for example, and uh, especially never eat fettuccine Alfredo and think that you eat in an Italian dish. <laughs> So and that what's the one thing I want you to be on my shoulder the next time I go to the grocery store? What's the one thing you're going to whisper in my ear when absolutely. I go to the grocery store the next time? Absolutely. I would be more than glad. I understand you like fish. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I will be more than glad to suggest you a nice risotto with uh, shrimp and a zucchini that I believe that you're going to like. And uh, that is uh, like one of the most delicate and, and, and uh, light flavor that you're going to have with this beautiful cream. It's like uh, something very heavenly. And what one thing are you going to tell me when I'm at the grocery store to watch out for and be careful to avoid? Absolutely. 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 No problem. What should I avoid at the grocery store? Everything that uh, seems too much Italian. 
Everything that it really seems like too much Italian with these weird names. See, that's the other thing. Unfortunately, you don't know the language very well. So when you see an Italian name like Prego, uh, you think, oh, that's an Italian name. And so it must be Italian. But to us, Prego means you're welcome. Now, my question is, would you ever buy a tomato sauce that's called, it's called you're welcome? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, but you know what? If you made tomato sauce and it said you're welcome and I knew it was coming from you, I would be like, oh, <laughs> yes, you're welcome. I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you, thank you. <laughs> Chef, I can't wait to cook with you. And I hope that all of our friends that are seeing this and watching this, and we should tell people that you're part of our food and beverage magazine, Clubhouse yeah. Tribe. I will. I will. That you are part of our clubhouse family. We will make a real. I will advertise that my my uh, tight with uh, food and beverage magazine right now is becoming even more solid, and uh, I'm definitely. I, I do join you in all your rooms in, in clubhouse, and I love the information that goes through that room. I must say, uh, sometimes you talk about olive oil, sometimes you talk about water, sometimes you talk about mushrooms. So, so that's what I was going to say. Can you teach me how to cook mushrooms? Oh, God, yes, of course. Because we've got a mushroom man who's changing the world. We're having a mushroom revolution in our midst. Yes, yes, I heard, I heard. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. A good, uh, right. a good fettuccine with risotto uh, with the mushrooms or scalopine with porcini mushrooms. Or penne ai funghi. Penne ai funghi, absolutely, absolutely. Chef, absolutely. grazie, thank you so much. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you, you have a great I day. love italiancooking.com. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure, really. There you go. Grazie. Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Politz has written a must read The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Books a Million, or wherever fine books are sold. Need a push getting your spirits, wine, or beverage brand into the hands of consumers? Interested in winning medals like a double gold award? Proof Awards 2020, the ultimate beverage competition, can help jumpstart your brand into the hands of beverage buyers. Enter the Proof Awards. Be a part of the Proof Awards marketing campaign with our partner, Food and Beverage Magazine. All of our judges are buyers, and that's what sets our awards program apart from the others. Our judges head the beverage programs for restaurants, bars, nightclubs, casinos, liquor stores, big box retail, and national wine and spirits distributors. Your brand will be tasted by buyers from more than 15 states across the U.S. We have hundreds of categories to choose from at www.proofawards.com. Be seen by 12 million readers with our partner, Food and Beverage Magazine. Get tasted and rated by buyers. The 2020 Proof Awards competition is open for spirits, wine, and beverage brands today. Proof Awards 2020, moving brands into the marketplace. www.proofawards.com.